With a long history of habitat loss and industrialized farming, Europe has seen some of the worst cases of insect decline and extinction in the world. I've come to the UK to see how old industrial sites are being turned into bug reserves in an attempt to reverse this worrying trend. Professor Dave Goulson has been studying insects for over 20 years and understands just how damaging their rapid decline could be. Dr. Goulson, why are insects disappearing? There's a whole host of challenges that they face, all to do with us. Modern farming methods have become very reliant on using lots and lots of pesticides, um, which mean the farmer can grow a, a, a perfect monoculture with not an insect in sight. The entire botanical diversity surrounding us is just a handful of species instead of the hundreds of species that used to live here. And a lot of people think that this is what the, the British countryside should look like, but it, it's only been like this for a few decades. It basically makes the landscape uninhabitable for most insects. Is there anything we can do to turn this around or have we sort of passed the tipping point? For some species, it's too late. Uh, some have gone extinct. But for the majority, they're still here. And we need to make sure we look after them. We should be absolutely terrified about this. It should, should be something that everyone is talking about and everyone is keen to fix. Because if, if we don't, we face a really bleak future without them. That's a call to arms if there ever was one. And here in the UK, some groups are taking the warnings of entomologists seriously. I'm on my way to Canviewick to see the UK's first reserve for insects. I'm due to meet Dr. Sarah Henshaw, an entomologist at Bug Life, an organization dedicated to the protection of insects. But this desolate ex-industrial or brownfield site is not exactly what I was expecting. Hello, you must be Sarah. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you I'm Gillary. Hi. Welcome to Canviewick. Just through those gates there is one of the most biodiverse and wildlife-rich sites in Britain. So do you want to take a look? I really would. <laughs> <laughs> what did this place used to be? So this site used to be an oil refinery. You can see remnants of industry all around us. It's been abandoned for more than 40 years. And why is an old oil refinery an ideal spot for protecting bugs? It hasn't been managed, there's been no pesticides, so it's providing natural habitats that have been lost in the wider landscape. Wildlife is using this as a refuge and really thriving here. Sarah, what's this? It looks like a helicopter should be landing any minute now. <laughs> it's a large tarmac base. There's about 30 of them across the site. They would have housed the large oil storage tankers. But as you can see, nature is clawing back. And how many species of insects are there on the site? There's over 2,500 different species on this site alone, including some that are found nowhere else. This is why the site is the UK's first book reserve. Can we try to find some? We can. A little um, hunting? One of the things about this brownfield site, which makes it so amazing, there's all these different habitats in a really small place. So bare open ground to bask, burrow and nest, flowers to feed on, scrub and trees to overwinter in and provide a bit of shelter. It's an amazing mosaic. It's got everything they need all in one place. So why are these insects so important to the natural landscape? So we need healthy ecosystems and invertebrates indicate that for us. If the bugs are happy, then the megafauna is happy. So the mammals and the birds are also happy. So we need to look after the bugs and everything else will fall into line. Campy Wick has been described as a little brownfield rainforest and I can definitely see why. There are bugs everywhere. So many that a team of volunteers carry out surveying work throughout the whole year. Rory and Imogen already have their morning's work set out on their table, which doubles as a lab. Hi, guys. Hi, yeah. Hello. Nice to meet you. What's going on in here? This guy's really active. So they're all ground beetles. Those are predatory species that are loving this bare, open ground. It can be wit. We've got a few species that are actually only found here. Oh. Did you catch these all today or over the past week? Yeah, even though it's quite a cold spring day today, you still see there's a rich diversity of life here on Canby Wick. And what will this help you establish moving forward? So it'll give us a good baseline of um, what's here, and then that way we can see how it's improved and what we're seeing more of, what we're seeing less of. Doing um, regular studies like this in such a biodiverse hotspot like Canby Wick is really important to see how the rest of the country is doing. 
Do you release the insects or do you take them back to your laboratory? What happens to them? Most of them we can ID on site so we can release them then later that day. However, some of them we might need to take back to have a better look at. What kind of caterpillar is this? So this is a lucky moth caterpillar. There they so they are. live inside this protective web on the hedgerows. You used to find them everywhere in the UK, but due to modern landscapes, you'd hardly find these caterpillars. And can be wick, we've seen them all over the place. I think that's just a perfect example. It shows what the these abandoned sites, that they're acting as real refuges for species that are declining elsewhere, but they're surviving on sites like this. Since bug life started surveying nearly 10 years ago, three insect species believed to be extinct have been discovered here at Canvey Wick. It's exciting and I can't resist trying to find a few myself. Okay. Whacking the vegetation <laughs> from side to side. All right. I got something. Excellent. Look. This is the true bug here. Yeah, oh, here oh, we oh, have oh, a look. It's hoverfly. Oh, hoverfly. So they're really critically important to the ecosystem and a lot of our insect life are quite downy little flies. <laughs> so we should be working to conserve them as well as their more spectacular butterflies and bumblebees. Yeah. So let's take this one back to the lab. <laughs> it all seems like good fun, but this surveying is crucial, not only for monitoring insect numbers, but also managing the land so that it provides the best possible habitat for these creatures to thrive. Imogen has offered to show me a declining species that needs some special treatment. What do we have in here, Imogen? So that's a brown banded cardaby, and it's one of the 200 different species of bees and wasps that you can find on this site. And a lot of work we do here is to remove some vegetation so they have some bare ground that they can burrow into and make what we call uh, bee cliffs. Removing vegetation sounds counterintuitive to a nature lover like myself, but Imogen is the expert, so I'll wait to see what she has to show me. She's taking me to find an elevated spot to create our bee cliffs. So here we are, we just pop the bees down. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling back a lot of the grass and a lot of the scrub. A lot of people, when they want to save invertebrates, they think that they have to plant these wildflower meadows, which is incredibly important, but also they do really need these nice bare areas that they can live in. And how do they occupy the space? Do they sort of burrow into the sand? Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll probably find a little hole like this one here, mm -hmm. and they'll dig a little nest into there, and then they'll lay their eggs. I feel like we've made a good dent in this. Can we release the bees? Yeah, definitely. Oh, here you go. It's so amazing to be so close to it. Especially when it's such a rare species. When we often think of conservation and saving species, we just think of these meadows and these perfectly yeah. manicured <laughs> landscapes. But we're in the middle of a wasteland. It's not a wasteland to them. It's their home, and it's, in fact, the last place they can be in this area. So it's really important that we take that into consideration when we make decisions about land. To date, Canvey Wick has been a resounding success. But to save Britain's insects, more land must be given over to their protection. Sarah wants me to see another site that Bug Life is looking to reclaim 20 kilometers down the road at West Thurrock Marshes. If successful, it could add an additional seven hectares of protected habitat to the cause. It's been acquired, but there's been very little activity on this site. I've only been here a few times, so I'm really excited to show you. Before this site was abandoned, it was a coal-fired power station. And this black substrate is the fly ash, which is the byproduct. Later on in the summer, these low nutrient, poor quality soils really favour lots of wildflowers that bumblebees, wasps, hoverflies, butterflies will really love and take advantage of. But to the untrained eye, it looks like wasteland. So we've had to do a huge amount of work campaigning and raising awareness. And we hope this is going to be one of our next book reserves in the UK. Do you have a lot of resistance when you approach developers and local governments when you want to talk about conservation on sites that could earn a lot of money for them? Of course, because this is prime development land. But unfortunately, in just 10 years, over half of the brownfield or post-industrial land in the Thames Gateway have already been developed. So it demonstrates the need for sites such as Canby Wick and hopefully this in the future. They're preserved and saved because we're losing this resource quicker than that we're even finding out how important it is. 
This site provides an amazing opportunity to challenge perception. And the key driver for the site is invertebrates. It's bugs, they are important. And I think we should have more of these, not only in the UK, but elsewhere in the world. After hanging out with Sarah and her amazing team at Bug Life, I don't think I can ever go by any piece of land, no matter how derelict and forgotten, and not see its full potential. And we really need to have this shift in perspective, because as our own species rapidly grows and industrializes land, every square inch counts. And by protecting our insect neighbors, we're ultimately safeguarding our own future. <laughs>